Welcome back everyone, Mariah Monetize here, and in today's video, I'm starting a new series, a five-part series that I'm really excited about. So I'm gonna be talking about life decisions that help me retire at the age of 24 as a self-made millionaire. So basically, this Thursday and for the next four Thursdays, you're gonna be getting five life decisions that I made for a total of 25, unless I start thinking of more, but I thought long and hard about life decisions that have helped me get to where I am today, and I'm really excited to be sharing them with you. I wanna give them to you in small form so that you're not overwhelmed with 25 life decisions. Some of these things are big decisions while others are really small that you could probably make today. So let's go ahead and get into it. Here are five life decisions that helped me retire at the age of 24. Number one, I started working young. So probably when I was like 10 or 11 years old, I was all about negotiating with my parents on, okay, if I complete these chores every single week, I want to be paid this amount. And I was very adamant about that. I was always trying to add more things to the list, trying to get paid more. I also started babysitting at the age of 13. Any opportunity I had to babysit, I took it. I was so fortunate that they would actually pick me up. So I found people that were really generous. Sometimes I would actually babysit up to five kids at once, but I never said no. I mean, it even got to the point that as I started getting older, like 15 and 16, I would turn down going out with my friends, going out to parties to babysit because I was so focused on working young and saving as much as I could. Number two is I found a hobby that yielded significant income. I am all about hobbies that can make you money and I found a really special and unique one. Sometimes you just have to get creative and think out of the box. So the hobby that I basically had that yielded a really great income was first I started winning tickets on the radio station. So I would win concert tickets, I would win theme park tickets, I would win like backstage passes, I would win designer handbags, designer sunglasses, American Express gift cards. So I would win all of these things, and if I wasn't gonna use it myself, like obviously the American Express gift cards I could just use for my own expenses, uh, but I sold everything that I possibly could on Craigslist. And actually when it came to the designer handbag and uh, sunglasses, I just took them back to Nordstrom's and they gave me store credit so I was actually able to just buy clothes with what I had because I knew that I couldn't resell it for as much. So I did that at first and then I kind of graduated to online sweepstaking. So when it came to online sweepstaking, I would win cars and cash and trips, electronics, free gas for a year, free taquitos for a year, free Oreos for a year. I think I want a couple cell phones. I would win gift cards just like every single place you could possibly think of, Best Buy, Target. So I basically would sell everything that I didn't need to like live or that was I was able to sell. So for example, when it comes to things like that, if it's a trip or if it's like backstage passes, you really can't sell it because first of all, you have to go. And unless you sell it to someone that is wanting to go with you, then that's not really an option. That didn't really feel right. So I would just invite people that I knew would really enjoy the experience. But after, you know, I basically sold every single car that I had ever, ever won, except the one that I won on The Price is Right, it was because I kind of needed it and it was also sort of sentimental because I had like basically stated when I was in third grade, like I am going to win a car on The Price is Right and I actually did it when I was like 18 or 19, so it had some sentimental value to it. But I basically sold every other car that I won. I tried to monetize every single prize. I won about... I would say a million dollars in prizes over that period of time from like 14 or 15 to about 20 or 21. And uh, that's, you know, the age, not the years. Uh, but basically, uh, I sold everything I won. The problem is that things are have a really high actual retail value. For example, from Staples, I won a $75,000 business package. It included building a website and a bunch of digital marketing. 
So I couldn't sell something like that. I just had to use it and it was beneficial for my business at the time anyways. So if you can get creative and if you can find a hobby that also yields you income, because I loved sweepstaking, the thrill of sweepstaking, the thrill of driving out to like where these radio uh, stations would do pop-ups and having to do weird things. Like I was trying to win Black Eyed Peas tickets one time and they had like these jars full of Black Eyed Peas and you had to guess how many Black Eyed Peas were in the jar and whoever got closest actually would win Black Eyed Peas tickets. So the thrill of winning, the thrill of like, Every time the door knocks, it's probably FedEx or UPS dropping off a new prize or a new package was really thrilling and exciting. Although it took a lot of time and work and resources, I truly, truly enjoyed it because the excitement that came from it was just incredibly fun. Number three, dropping out of college. Dropping out of college was a major life decision that helped me retire young because if I would have continued through college, I would have wasted two more years of my time and I also would have missed out on a lot of opportunities to win sweepstakes. But the main thing is that it would have probably led me to the workforce. And if I would have entered the the workforce and gotten like some sort of a corporate job, I would have never probably invested or found different avenues. I would have never started my concession business. Dropping out of college is one of the most important life decisions that I made when it came to retiring young because it gave me the opportunity to be extremely entrepreneurial. I had always had the entrepreneurial spirit, but it was never really fostered with basically the different... Uh, environments that I was in. So I just felt like I had to enter the corporate world and get like, you know, a business degree and do something super basic. But dropping out of college really helped me take a completely different path. And that's what led me to a lot of investing and a lot of business opportunities. Number four is I avoided student loan debt and just debt in general. If I didn't have the money to buy it, then I wouldn't purchase it. And I was really close. If my parents would have been willing to co-sign a loan for me, I would have gone to St. Mary's College in Moraga, California, and I would have ran up $200,000 in student jet and student debt just to get like the small college uh, classroom experience. I was so obsessed with like there being one professor for every 15 students, but it was kind of like an ego thing. It was kind of like a flex as well, wanting to go to St. Mary's because, you know, I could have easily, and that's what I ended up doing, just gone to like my local CSU and saving a ton of money. So avoiding student loan debt was massive. I mean, imagine if I would have gone to St. Mary's, I would have gone for two years, like I did at CSU, Stanislaus. I would have racked up $100,000 in debt to, to then realize that college was a scam and that it wasn't for me and that I wanted to take a completely different path. That would have been the first possible option. And the second would have been, I feel so dumb for quitting halfway through. I have to just finish and basically accumulate another $100,000 in student debt. So being able to get out of the college rat race with zero debt gave me the freedom to use that $100,000 that I had saved from selling all the things that I want on sweepstakes and go out and start a business. Number five is staying curious and asking questions. I would have never found, for example, uh, cryptocurrency if I wasn't curious and uh, tried to continuously learn about this new technology. There can easily be a lot of fear around asking questions. Maybe it's asking questions to entrepreneurs that you look up with. Maybe they're local entrepreneurs or they're like, you know, famous entrepreneurs. It's never a bad idea to try asking questions. What happened was, I got really curious, especially when it came to the concession space. And I found someone that was basically willing and very capable of mentoring me. And because of my curiosity and uh, my openness to continuously ask questions, it got me so much further in the concession space. Staying curious was actually a pivotal uh, thing that led me to dropping out of college because I think it's always important to ask questions, right? And the more that I learned about the college system and the stats of people that graduate from college and the jobs that they get in correlation with their student loan debt, I came to the conclusion, I was like, this doesn't make sense for me. Obviously it depends what you wanna do, but for me personally, college didn't make sense. That was because I was curious and I asked questions and I always was very determined on finding the answer and finding the truth. 
For example, staying curious about our monetary system absolutely led me to Bitcoin. So those are five life decisions that helped me retire at the age of 24. I have four more of these videos coming up that I'm really excited to share with you. I think these are gonna help a lot of people and I think that the path that I took was different, right? You have to take a very, very different path than most people talk about to be able to have that financial freedom um, in your mid-20s. So I hope you stick around. I'm excited to be sharing all of these ideas and stories with you. If you want to support my channel in any way, I have a lot of links down below for you to get started in the cryptocurrency space. That is all I have for you today. As always, go out there and create a portfolio that you love.